Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will go through another popular interview question on ML, which is why logistic regression is called as regression. Okay, so we all know that logistic regression is a classical ML algorithm for classification purpose, right? So though it is used for classification purpose, why it is called as logistic regression? Why not logistic classification? So this is actually the question, right? So, to answer this question, <coughs> you need to know how logistic regression works, right? So, the hypothesis or the prediction of uh, logistic regression can be given as h theta of x is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus theta transpose x, right? So, this is also known as sigmoid function, correct? If you have seen my earlier videos on logistic regression, I have explained this in depth, okay? So, this is also called as <coughs> sigmoid function and this theta transpose x here is the short form for theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 so on and so forth up to theta n x n <coughs> right. So, these thetas are our learnable parameters and these x's are our features. So, you guys are already aware of these things, right? So, this equation, if you look at it carefully, this is the equation for classical linear regression, right? Classical linear regression. But how can the same thing be used for logistic regression with such a small modification with this equation, right? So, <coughs> the trick here is that we convert the probabilities. So, whenever we are dealing with classification, we have probabilities associated with each classes, right? So, let us say we have class 0 and class 1 and we are predicting the probability of any data point x belonging to class 1, right? So, generally accepted guidelines is if the predicted probability is greater than 0 0.5, we predict the target label as class 1, <coughs> right? If it is less than or equal to 0 0.5, we predict the target class as class 0. So, this is 0 0.5 is the default threshold, default threshold of the prediction. So, let us not get into detail on the threshold value settings as of now, that is the topic for another video. In this video, we will understand why in this video, we will understand how we can answer this particular question, why logistic regression is called as regression, okay. So, now, <coughs> we have these probabilities, right. So, let us say we have the data points associated x1, uh, x2, x3 up to xm. So, these are our data points and let us say we have our target variables 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So, these are our classes. So, what we do, we convert these probabilities, probabilities into something called as log of odds, right. So, how do we convert this? We convert probabilities to log, probabilities to log of odds using the formula log of p divided by 1 minus p, okay. So, this is, this will give us log of odds and p is our probability value okay so what happens with this conversion so the probabilities i'll just write it down probabilities between 0 and 0 0.5 would get converted into log of odds and this the value of log of odds ranges between 0 and minus infinity Right. Similarly, the probabilities between 0 0.5 and 1 will get converted into log of odds in the range 0 to plus infinity. Okay. So, if you plot this, this x and this log of odds in a two dimensional graph, this, this is how it looks like. So, sorry for that. Uh, it is not so straight, but you get the gist of it. Right. So, this is our x axis. And this is our y axis. In this case, the y axis represents log of odds. Okay. 
and here the y axis ranges from 0 to plus infinity and here 0 to minus infinity. So, this part here represents the probabilities between 0 and 0 0.5. This part here represents the probabilities between 0 0.5 and 1. Right. So, <clears throat> what we do now? We have our x, right? So, these are all our data points. So, let us say we have data points something like this. Okay. So, this is how we get the plot. Now, what we do? We try to find the best fit line to these data points, right? So, initially, the process remains the same. So, we initialize the thetas to some value and then we will try to adjust those thetas in order to find the best fit line, right? Best fit line. So, now if you recollect the hypothesis that we have there 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus theta transpose x, these thetas or in other terms the learnable parameters are all learned with respect to log of odds, not with respect to probabilities, right? With res Since we are learning the parameters with respect to log of odds and in turn we are trying to fit find the best fit line with respect to these log of odds by considering the feature values x, correct? So, in other words, in short, these thetas are learned with respect to log of plots rather than probabilities, right? So, <clears throat> this is how you can understand it visually. Then what we do? We get the log of odds for each of these data points, right? So, for this data point, this is the log of odds value. For this data points, this is our log of odds value. For this data point, this is our log of odds value. Similarly, we will have log of odds value for these data points as well, right? Then what we do? We take this log of odds value, convert it back to probabilities, right? So, what happens? The continuous range values between minus infinity to plus infinity will get shrunk to have the values between 0 and 1. Right? And if we plot these probabilities, we get a graph something like this. A S-shaped curve. So, in order to avoid the confusion, let me redraw this. Uh, give me a second. Let me just read out the probabilities graph, which we obtain by converting the log of odds to probabilities. Okay. So, let me just draw it in a one quadrant. So, this is 0, this is 1 and here we have 0. 0.5. These are the values of x. This is our y. So, this is a sigmoid curve. Right. And how do we get log of odds converted to probability? We have a formula which is e to the power log of odds divided by 1 plus e to the power log of odds. So, with this formula, we will convert all the log of odds into probabilities and then if we plot it against the feature value x, we get something like this. And this S-shaped curve or the sigmoid curve can change its direction or the orientation with respect to x and y uh, with the parameters that we learn that is theta when we are trying to find the best fit line, right? How? So, let us say this is the first line that we got when we initialize the thetas for the first time and we try to minimize the errors, right? In order to find the best fit line, we, ne we need this line to be as close as possible to these data points, right? Correct? So, what we do? We will rotate this line so that we have the minimum errors, right? So, if this is our second line, this is our line during the second iteration, this line will give us new log of odds and since we get new log of odds, we get new set of probabilities. And since we get new set of probabilities, this shape of 
S shaped curve may get changed to something like this. Okay, and this is also called as likelihood. Likelihood. So, what is also called as likelihood? The probabilities converted from log of odds are called as likelihoods. These are all the also the probabilities. So, one thing to remember here is the probabilities we are not considering this as area under the curve. This is not area under the curve. Okay, so you have to remember this. So, these probabilities are our likelihoods. Okay, so in order to find the best likelihood, we are trying to find the best fit line internally, right? So, this is why we have the word regression, even though we are using it for classification. Okay, so hope this concept is clear. I have tried to explain it as simple as possible but if you want to learn it in more depth i have a separate video where i have explained the complete thing in depth which is titled as log of odds okay so please go and watch that video i'll also provide the link in the description okay so that's it for this video uh, if you guys have any questions please reach out to me in comment section uh, i'll be happy to help you guys so till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye and one more thing, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. And if you like the content, please do give it a thumbs up. Okay, bye-bye.